Hello again, everyone. I'm Mike Adams. On this edition of Beyond the Bean on Air, we'll look at the United Soybean Board's continuing focus on soybeans as the source of two distinct elements, protein and oil. But first, here are just a few of the many ways your checkoff dollars have been working for you. Ten soybean farmers selected from applicants from across the United States received an in-person education on the benefits of the soy checkoff as part of USB's annual See for Yourself program. This year, participants learned about the use of soy biodiesel at Lambert St. Louis International Airport, toured a barge loading facility, and visited a soy research laboratory. They also traveled to one of the largest export markets for U.S. soy meal, Mexico. This summer, South Dakota soybean farmers learned more about customers beyond the elevator during a Lunch and Learn customer appreciation event in Volga, South Dakota. Farmers learned a bit about how meal becomes feed for poultry, pigs, fish, and cattle. 98% of all soybean meal is used to feed these animals. The South Dakota Soybean Research and Promotion Council, South Dakota Soybean Processors, and South Dakota Pork Producers joined USB in sponsoring the event. A USB program helped add a touch of green to the St. Mary's County Fair in Maryland this summer. Thanks in part to USB's Green Fair program, this fair installed soy-based foam insulation in fair buildings. The program helped 13 fairs use soy-based products this year to educate fairgoers on the growing diversity of soy-based products. One of the areas of increased emphasis for USB today is doing more to understand and serve the customers who buy U.S. soybeans. Let's learn about this exciting focus. In any business, understanding the needs of your customers is critical. That's why the 69 farmer directors of the United Soybean Board have taken action to start looking at soybeans in the same way their customers do, as two distinct parts, meal and oil. USB's long-range strategic plan, approved last summer, encourages this customer focus. Two examples include increasing the value of U.S. soy meal to your customers, especially the animal ag sector, and meeting your soy oil customers' demand for a healthier cooking oil. These objectives will help guide how USB farmer leaders invest checkoff dollars in research and market building activities. Improving U.S. soy traits also helps meet customer needs. Traits are necessary if you, because the consumer is constantly changing and, you know, they want a better quality oil, a better quality protein, a better quality meal. So to meet those needs, we have to improve because we want to continue to sell our product. USB will evaluate the impact of its activities by measuring changes in the value and volume of U.S. soy meal and oil. This year, USB will set a baseline for these measurements. For Beyond the Bean on Air, I'm Rebecca Steven. Commodity soy oil has long been a staple in the U.S. food supply. Now there's demand for more versatile oil in frying and baking and a sustainable replacement for crude oil. USB-funded researchers are responding on both fronts. Here are more details. Soy oil is nearly 20% of the soybean and has many uses, such as in biodiesel and in food for humans. And now, market demand for enhanced oils is driving a closer look at soy oil. The Soy Checkoff has responded by working with the U.S. soy industry to develop new soybean varieties that produce an improved oil. Researchers are developing U.S. soybean varieties that could provide human health benefits, such as high oleic, increased steric acid, and omega-3 fatty acids. High oleic is, is currently the driver, and I think it's very important. Uh, we see that high oleic is becoming uh, uh, probably a, a larger and larger percent, hopefully 50 percent in, in a very few years, because it's very adaptable. We see no yield drag uh, when we put it in beans. It actually uh, has, has very it's very seed friendly, very farmer friendly, and the big thing is it adds value to the market and in, in, the, in the component aspect of, of, of the soybean. These new varieties help farmers respond to market demands for all those food industry uses. Soy oil is also being viewed as an increasingly viable replacement for petroleum in products such as plastics, foams, and fuel. 
Creating oils for specific markets could spur demand, which is always good news for soybean farmers. For Beyond the Bean on Air, I'm John Butler reporting. So what about the protein side of soybeans? Well, U.S. beef-funded research is active there as well to improve the value of U.S. soy meal for customers and U.S. soybean farmers. The demand for soy meal, particularly from its largest customer, animal agriculture, continues to evolve. An array of checkoff-funded research is investigating whether the amount and type of protein in every soybean can be improved to fit the needs of specific markets. Researchers have explored increasing protein content in soybeans, modifying their amino acid balance, and a more desirable sugar profile, which could improve the way animals metabolize energy. All of these efforts aim to preserve or increase the value of soybeans to animal agriculture. When you look at our animal ag industry, and which primarily uses soybean meal as a protein component. And so if we increase the value of uh, soybean meal, then we've increased basically their ability or need to use it. So if we look at the amino acid and protein content of soybeans, and hopefully it would translate to soybean meal, and then make it a more valuable component in a, in a feed ration. For Beyond the Bean On Air, I'm Kayla Hedrick reporting. That's our report for this time. Thanks for watching and for all your efforts to raise the best soybean crop in the world. We'll see you again next time on Beyond the Bean On Air.